Good morning. This is Michael from inspiredtoeducate.net. Excited to bring you some kind of like perspectives on how artificial intelligence is impacting music composition. We're largely going to just focus on OpenAI and Google Magenta. So for me, music has been a huge part of my life. I have been playing violin since I was five. And it's been fun to start to share that gift with my kids. Really also love playing music in my music ministry. And it's awesome to see how music brings us together and creates a sense of prayer. So in school, really enjoyed getting to explore this idea of artificial neural networks. Uh, so Artificial neural networks is a fairly old idea in computer science and borrows from my bi our biology. We have these things called neurons. They're all kind of connected to each other. It's largely mysterious how these interconnections make us who we are when we really think about it, but functionally it still works. So let's take a really simple example to motivate this concept. So if I were going to estimate the cost of a house to be sold, I might like think about the number of bedrooms, the square footage, maybe the quality of the neighborhood. All of these factors would show up as maybe input nodes on a neural network and we have an output node. We would near, numerically represent all this information over on the left side. Internally, the neural network can have an arbitrary number of nodes and they can be connected to each other in you know any way possible the actual like interconnection between all these nodes and the strengths of those connections is uh, created by training and lots of different algorithms have opinions of how you get there and in the world of deep learning we're currently showing just one layer of neural network, but you know, in deep learning, you have profoundly more layers at hand. At the UCF lab EPLEX, we explored evolutionary complexity and we, we studied the kind of concept of uh, using genetic algorithms and neural networks together. I really appreciate Dr. Stanley's approach from the standpoint of also embracing art as a exploration piece. And I don't know, they, these ideas still fascinate me today. One of the pieces that you could still find online called Pick Breeder enables you to see pieces of art generated by evolutionary processes. You can look at all these images and kind of say, I think maybe this is artistically most interesting. I think this one is also interesting. You can basically vote for what's most interesting and then click next and new baby images will evolve based on your kind of preferences. So if we look at this instance, all of these images are all cousins of each other. And visually we would say all of these images are similar to each other. So started thinking in class, hey, so is there a musical analog to this? So ended up building out a drum manifestation with this idea called Neat Drummer. So you had the ability to see 10 examples of interesting drum music. You got to say, that's interesting, that's interesting, that's lame. You're in moderately interesting those musical pieces would then have babies and you can then repeat that process. It's really exciting to see this idea has continued to evolve in research. For modern times, we now have things like TensorFlow and TensorFlow.js. TensorFlow is Google's deep neural network technology and TensorFlow.js en enables us to bring this uh, complexity to the web. So we can do things like image classification, object detection, pose estimation, simple face detection, all of these technologies 
we can now do in the browser. We can make these models available in the browser and integrate into applications because of TensorFlow JS and similar tech. So we're going to continue our exploration on the Google Magenta project. And we're going to just take a listen to some of the transformers that they have on their uh, projects page. So if you go to demos, you can find this under collections. And we're going to look at listen to transformer. So let's see how this sounds. That sounds pretty algorithmic to me. We'll go to the next one and see what that sounds like. That one was pretty good, actually. So this Transformers definitely feels like it was trained on a, like a Chopin, and it seems to riff quite a bit off of that sort of idea. Let's give it a listen to one more. say that was largely uh, successful as well. So that gives you a sample of what the best of probably what uh, the Magenta project brings to bear. Let's move over to OpenAI. So OpenAI is known for their work around ChatGPT, of course, but that same idea of thinking about what's the next right word also applies very well to the concept of music. What's the next right note? So here we're going to compose in, um, you know, their style of country, but start with the input base of Beethoven's for release. Let's give it a listen. That's actually not bad. Um, yeah. And if you wanted to take that work and download it, get an MP3 of it, or you want the raw MIDI file, you can do that. Let's uh, give a listen to one more. like that. I, I remember reading somewhere that this iteration isn't the the best at um, handling multiple instruments in terms of music generation. So the fact that it generated that was actually not bad. So I encourage you to go to um, Google MuseNet and try to play with this yourself. Uh, curious what you might build from this. So to close this out, I um, want to refer you to some good talks to continue your exploration. This 2019 talk from Google I.O. Uh, explores a artist who takes her band and really pushes these ideas to the limit. Really good talk from a artist perspective, not a computer scientist point of view. 
also encourage you to check out uh, the studio from the Magenta project. So they have uh, like a VST plugin to Ableton that allows you to kind of use all of this cool stuff. And apparently they also have a standalone application. We'll need to kind of review that separately, but hopefully you have some cool tools to explore AI and music in your, your world. Hope you have a great day.